Today we're taking a look at these NHL matches, which are happening on Thursday, October 20, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified, as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Dallas Stars vs Toronto Maple Leafs Against Winnipeg, Dallas started slow but took control of the game en route to a multi-goal victory. The Stars held a 9-8 shot advantage in the opening period and went to the dressing room tied at 1 after 20 minutes of play. After spotting the Jets the first goal of the game, Tyler Seguin evened the score with his first goal of the season at the 10-20 mark off assists from Ty Delandria and Mason Marchment. In the second period, Dallas held an 11-6 edge in shots on goal and outscored Winnipeg 2-0 to take a 3-1 lead after 40 minutes. Johnny Hakampa gave the Stars a 2-1 lead with his first of the year at 15:38 off assists from Ryan Suter and Marchment. Less than two minutes later, Joel Kivaranta made it a 3-1 game with his first of the season off an assist from Issa Lindell at the 17:28 mark. The third period saw the Stars outshot by an 11-9 margin, but they scored the lone goal of the period to salt things away. Miro Heiskanen closed the scoring with his second of the year, on the power play, at 8-12 off assists from Rube Hintz and Jason Robertson. Jake Ettinger was stellar between the pipes as he stopped 24 shots for the Stars, who held a 29-25 edge in shots, in the victory. He's expected to be between the pipes again for this contest. Against Arizona, Toronto started sluggishly, rallied to tie the game, only to give up a late goal for the second time this season, leading to a loss. The Maple Leafs held a 5-4 advantage in shots in the opening period, but they found themselves down 2-0 after the opening period of play. In the second period, Toronto was outshot by a 9-8 margin, with neither side denting the twine, keeping the score at 2-0 after two periods of action. The third period saw the Maple Leafs hold a 15-6 shot advantage with each team scoring twice, dooming them to defeat. William Nylander got Toronto on the board with his third goal of the season, on the power play, at 12.54 off assists from John Tavares and Morgan Reilly. Only 24 seconds later, Mitch Marner tied the game with an unassisted goal, his first of the season, at 13.18 of the period. Toronto gave up the go-ahead goal with 1.33 to play and thought they had tied the game in the final minute, only for Alex Kerfoot's goal be wiped out by replay on a hand pass by Reilly. Arizona hit the empty net in the closing seconds to seal the win. Eric Algren made 15 saves for Toronto, who held a 28-19 advantage in shots in the loss. Ilya Samsonov is expected to get the call between the pipes for this contest. Toronto will eventually get their offensive attack going, as their struggles in the first four games of the year isn't indicative of the talent they have to put on the ice. The problem for them in this contest is that they have to contend with a Dallas team that has surrendered all of three goals in three games this season. Ettinger has been the proverbial wall in net, stopping 84 of 87 shots, 0.966 save percent in those contests, while the offense has poured in 13 goals. That proves to be a challenge for Toronto as they haven't faced a team as stingy as the Stars yet this season. Ettinger does his job, and the Stars get enough offensive production to put this one in the win column. Our team pick is. Dallas Stars plus 133. Ettinger is looking to emerge as an elite goaltender this season, and he looked very sharp in his first start against a solid Nashville offense. The Stars were a top defensive team last season, and Dallas appears to be picking up where the team left off last year. The Stars are well organized defensively, and they consistently block a lot of shots as well, Dallas should be able to limit a Toronto offense that failed to score more than three goals in any of the team's first three games of the season. The Stars also like to slow the game down to help their defense, and Dallas won't likely want to get into a wide open game with the Leafs' top level talent. Our total pick is under 6.5 goals. Washington Capitals vs. Ottawa Senators. The Capitals followed up their two game losing streak by winning their last two games. 
they will try to keep the momentum going with a win over the Senators, which will give them their third win in a row. Washington is averaging 3.25 goals per game. They scored six goals on 30 shots in their last game. Alex Ovechkin had two goals and two assists for the Capitals. John Carlson had one goal and an assist, while Evgeny Kuznetsov had three assists. Kuznetsov will be serving a one-game suspension for high sticking. Washington has struggled defensively, giving up 3.25 goals per game. They gave up four goals in their last game and will need to do a better job if they want to get the win. The Senators snapped their two-game losing streak with a win over the Bruins in their last game. They will try to keep the momentum going with a win over the Capitals, which will give them their second win in a row. Ottawa is averaging 3.33 goals per game. They scored seven goals on 31 shots in their last game. Brady Tkachuk, Drake Batherson, and Tim Stutzel had a goal and two assists apiece for the Senators. Artem Zub had a goal and an assist, while Claude Giroux scored a goal. The Senators lost two of their first three games. With the exception of their win over the Bruins, they have struggled offensively, scoring only three goals in their previous two games. They also haven't played well on special teams, converting only 12.5% of their power play opportunities, so expect them to struggle offensively in this game. The Capitals split their first four games, but they are playing very well offensively, scoring 13 goals in four games. They've also done well on special teams, converting 21.4% of their power play opportunities. The Senators have struggled defensively so far, giving up at least three goals in three straight games, and they also haven't done a good job killing penalties, so expect them to have a hard time slowing down the Capitals. Go with Washington for the win. Out of the gate the Capitals were only able to strike for four goals in their first two games, both losses. They turned it around with three in their first win over the Canadians, then exploded versus Vancouver, highlighted by a two-goal, two-assist night from Alex Ovechkin. The Senators entered their home opener with just three goals to their name, before exploding for seven from seven different players versus Boston, in capturing their home opener. Big offices and trade acquisition Brady Tkachuk is doing what was expected, tied for the team lead with two goals and four points from the top line, which has led the attack with four total goals. Claude Giroux and Shane Pinto have also pumped in two goals apiece. Though both teams tripped out of gate, each crushed the over in their last game and combined had 13 goals and wins for both. Both offenses have now shown their capabilities to be potent, which should carry over into Thursday night's game. The average combined score in the last 10 games between these two teams is 6.7 goals per game, and the over is 4-2 in the last six games in the series. Our total pick is over 6.5 goals. Nashville Predators vs Columbus Blue Jackets. The Predators are off to a slow start after losing three of their first five games. They will try to put an end to their losing streak with a win over the Blue Jackets, which will give them their third win i six games and their first road win of the season. Nashville is averaging 2.40 goals per game. They scored three goals on 32 shots in their last game. Cody Glass, Philip Forsberg, and Tanner Jeanett scored a goal apiece for the Predators, while Mikkel Granlund had two assists. Nashville has struggled defensively, giving up three goals per game. They gave up four goals in their last game and will need to play better if they want to win this game. The Blue Jackets snapped their three-game losing streak with a win over the Canucks in their last game, giving them their first win of the season. They will try to keep the momentum going with a win over the Predators, which will give them their second win in a row. Columbus is averaging 2.25 goals per game. They scored four goals on 33 shots in their last game. Johnny Gaudreau and Vladislav Gavrikov had a goal and an assist for the Blue Jackets. Zach Wierenski scored a goal, while Yegor Chinnikov and Boon Jenner each had two assists. Columbus has also struggled defensively, giving up 4.25 goals per game. They gave up three goals in their last game and will need a better effort if they want to get the win. The Predators lost three of their first five games and their only road game so far. They have struggled offensively during their losing streak, scoring only five goals in their last three games. They've also failed to take advantage of their power play opportunities, converting only 4.8% of them, which will be a problem against the Blue Jackets, who are killing 80% of their penalties. Even though the Blue Jackets have struggled defensively so far, they won't be tested by the Predators. The Blue Jackets have also struggled early in the season, losing three of their first four games. 
but they have faced a tougher challenge with three of their first four opponents, finishing with over 100 points last season. They played well offensively against the Canucks, and they're facing a team that is almost as bad defensively and won't have trouble scoring against them, so go with Columbus for the win. The Nashville Predators have been a good offensive team in the very early stages of the regular season, as they have scored 12 goals through their first five games. They are entering this game without a single player on the injury report, so they are at full strength. They have been disappointing thus far on the power play, as they have scored a single goal on 21 power play attempts, 4.76%. They also have been shooting below average, as they have a 8.3 shooting percentage as a team, which is two full points lower than the league average up to this point. The Columbus Blue Jackets have been absolutely brutal at scoring the puck so far as they have posted nine total goals, which is 25th in the NHL as of this writing. They have three players dealing with injuries with all of them being placed on the injured reserve right now. Their biggest issue is the fact that out of 10 total power play attempts, they have not scored one thus far. As a team, they are shooting just 7.6%, which is not up to par in the NHL this season right now. With Junas Corpicillo making his first NHL start since his hip surgery, it is difficult to expect him to still have his lateral quickness, as that usually goes away with any kind of hip surgery. The law of averages tell us that Columbus is due to score on the power play, as they are better than 0 for 10 with a man advantage. These defenses have not played to the best of their abilities in the young season, as Nashville is allowing 3 goals per game, while Columbus is giving up 4.25 goals per game thus far. The over has hit in each of their last 4 games against each other, so go with the over here as well. Arizona Coyotes vs Montreal Canadiens. Shane Gustibahir is enjoying a productive opening string of games. The veteran has already collected five points in four games, remarkable considering he is a defenseman. And is logging a ton of ice, averaging 23 minutes per game. Clayton Keller is considered one of the best players on this Coyotes squad. The 24-year-old winger has a goal and an assist so far. Keller collected 63 points in 67 games last season and was productive against Montreal, netting four points in the two meetings. J.J. Moser has been a bright spot, amassing three points. The 22-year-old defenseman had 15 points in his 2021-2022 rookie season and has been one of their best players. Nick Suzuki is clicking. The 23-year-old was recently named the new captain of the historic franchise. The young center has accrued two goals along with three assists in four games. Suzuki was held pointless against the Coyotes last year. Cole Caulfield is another young player capable of posting big numbers. The 21-year-old winger scored 23 goals last season and already has found the back of the net three times this season. The Habs feature a very young defensive core. Caden Gould is a former first-round pick and it appears he is going to be a good one. The 20-year-old had two helpers in the win against the Penguins and is playing 20-plus minutes per game. The Arizona Coyotes are in full tank mode, and I believe they will finish last or close to last in the entire NHL this season. They are also playing without their best defenseman, Jacob Chichron, along with one of their best defensive players in Nick Schmaltz. Montreal is also a young team, but is 2-0 in their two home games this season, defeating strong foes in the Maple Leafs and Penguins. Furthermore, the Coyotes are giving up a ton of shots. They are squandering an average of 41 shots on goal per game in three clashes. It's no surprise they have surrendered 14 goals in three games. I recommend taking the Canadians to win in regulation for added value. Our team pick is Montreal Canadiens minus 160. Defense and goaltending were also terrible for the Coyotes last year. They rank 30th in goals against per game and last in shots against per game. Carol Vigmelka had a record of 12 to 32 3 with a 3.68 GA and 0.898 SV percent last season. He struggled in his first two starts, allowing five goals or more in each of his first two games, but he played well in his third start. Shane Gustisbehir had 51 points last season. He has recorded one point or more in each of the first three games, and he leads the team with five points on the season. Montreal was a huge plus 210 underdog in their last game, but they pulled off the upset and defeated the Pittsburgh Penguins 3-2 in overtime. Kirby Dach scored the game-winning goal. Nick Suzuki scored a goal and had an assist. Sam Montembault stopped 26 out of 28 shots faced. Arizona has been able to light the lamp against the Canadians in recent games. 
They average 4.67 goals per game over the last three contests against Montreal. They have improved in each game on offense this season. The Coyotes scored two goals in the season opener, three goals in the second game, and four goals in the third game. Karol Vigmelka struggled in his first two starts, allowing five goals or more in each of his first two games. The over is 6-4 in the last 10 games between these two teams. This will be a higher scoring game and the over will hit. Our total pick is over 5.5 goals.